Good evening from Sacred Space at Titania's Realm. It's 7.25pm on the 4th of December 2023. I've had a lovely day. I spent it with my friend Lynn out at her place at Capella Bar. I got new tyres on my car so that's one more stress or knock down because I've been worrying about that extensively for about six months actually so that's done but of course it means I'm <laughs> back to broke but it's okay tires are important and uh, I need to keep my car maintained and remain reasonably mobile for my freedom of movement for my wild witchy ways um yeah so I spent the whole day with Lynn after we got the tyres done and uh, it was a very hot day today uh, but now it's night time and it's cooling down plus I have the luxury of being in my air conditioning which reminds me I must close this door keep the cool in so um yes so a few of my friends around me have come down with various illnesses, which is a concern, a bit worried about that. And uh, but meanwhile, we soldier on as the best as we can, right? So today's readings, offerings from my journal entries are entitled "Evolved, Empowered, Yet Still Endlessly Alone." Size, size. I can't even remember when I did these titles, they're probably one to two, even three years old, but still kind of alone. But um, yeah, looking forward to shifts, magical shifts in um, my reality in hopefully the not too distant future, but one can never tell. So here are, <clears throat> here's a photo of Oh, good, yeah, I can see it. I can see it reflected in my window, ironically. A lovely feather I found. And a uh, very pretty feather. What year was that gifted to me? Don't say. But anyway, it's from a couple of years ago, probably. Because that ring, I don't have that ring anymore. I lost it. That particular ring I bought in a second-hand shop in Byron, this ring. And it wasn't sterling silver, it was just a, I don't know what metal it was, but it was lovely. It was all engraved with the words magic, and on the inside it said sacred space, 111, and on the top of it it had the all-seeing eye. And that ring came into my life. I bought it for $12 in a second-hand shop in Byron Bay, right? Only about three weeks before my gallbladder surgery was suddenly foisted upon me. Well, I'd, I'd been waiting for it for four years, but when it happened, it happened very suddenly and unexpectedly. And I, it was interesting how that ring came into my life as a spiritual reminder of my walk and my innate power, mana, because when that surgery happened, I did in fact come very close to death. I had a near death experience and um, it was a fight, a, a fight to um, reintegrate into my body because <laughs> I was actually quite, quite relieved to go at that point in time. So no, I was cast back to earth and here we are um, four and a half years later and I'm finally thriving people and enjoying my life and have worked incredibly hard with you know my little jewellery um, hobby and also at healing myself and continuing the integration that really began with that um, intense and intensely spiritual and very frightening surgery. So I lost that ring about a year later which I was devastated but um, I thought to myself, well, that energy has now moved on and shifted and no longer needing the extra spiritual protection, right? I'd like to make another ring similar to it, 
um, which I might attempt one day. But um, it's okay sometimes to just let things go and flow. But um, I must admit, I was quite upset when I lost it. Anywho. So we begin with the 4th of December 2022. Beauregard is so proud and happy with his Kong ball. I went to lie down as he's been driving me nuts with that ball. So he joined me on the bed and wanted a snuggle. No rest from Bobo and his ball. And uh, hmm. I was telling my friend Lynn today about how much I miss Bobo and how devastating it all was. And she sort of smiled at me serenely and said, isn't it a bit strange though that just not long after you lost one bow, another bow entered your life and started messaging you and, you know, showing interest. And I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. So um, very strange sequence of events um, or sequence, is that the right word? Confluence of events after losing my little doggy, who I do still miss deeply and uh, yeah, but I'm I'm enjoying the, the new possibilities that are opening up all around me, you know, even in my dance space at Brooklyn Standard, you know, in my romantic life and uh, my creativity and yeah, my by blossoming more and more and more into a new version of myself that I um, I haven't seen um, either ever before or for a very, very, very long time. So here I post a photograph. It's a bit of a strange thing to take a photograph of actually, but then I can be a bit strange at times. And I post a nice cup of tea in my sacred space garden and I, I know why I posted that because it had kisses on top I had a friend <coughs> a, 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 a kind of a a mothering figure in my neighbor four doors down the road from me when I was a child Mrs June Robertson and whenever she saw bubbles on top of my cup of tea she'd say oh look Tanya you're getting kisses and um, so I guess that's why I posted that, because it actually isn't about the cup of tea at all, but reminded me of, of her um, deep and abiding and soul-nurturing and soul-nourishing love, which I desperately needed as a child, given that I was raised by epic fucking maniacs. <coughs> so, um, yeah. So it comes to me, yes, why I posted that. <coughs> and the tree, the, the tree, the reflections of the tree around the bubbles actually create interesting kind of artistic looking shapes too, which you could almost interpret as a reading without supping the tree and drinking down to the leaves of the, the um, tea leaves. <coughs> oh, anyway, life is interesting when you're spiritual people, you can see pattern recognition in almost anything. Huh. Just said on my laptop, I was going to say that can't be right. It said 34 degrees. I'm like, it's not that hot now. And then it jumped down to 25 degrees. Mostly cloudy. Hmm. <coughs> Interesting. <coughs> 4th of December, <coughs> sorry guys, sometimes when I have the air conditioning on it reaches a certain level of coolness, it sets off my lungs, but I'd rather be cold than scathing hot any day. 4th of December 2020, I had my debrief with my psychiatrist today, it was intense given the multifaceted triggers of the past week. Also, my hypomanic state. 
December. I always lose December. I lose December and then I lose February, March and sometimes parts of April too because my birthday falls in April. And um, I usually look forward to my birthday because it usually heralds the end of what I call the shitty months, which is February and March, which are the birthdays and um, death days of my family of origin. So it's usually, I'm usually in a very dark space. So like basically, for the love of God, I lose three months of a year because December's bad for me because it's always scathing hot. And then I have all the familial triggers from that. And then there's a little bit of respite in January and then it all starts up again. I really hope that my brain just lets it all go one day and just kind of goes meh and doesn't let things kind of bubble under the surface. I really think sometimes maybe I should try EMDR, which my psychiatrist was not keen on because he worried that it would just rip everything apart or even psilocybin, which he also wasn't keen on for the same reasons. But um, I sometimes think I need another adjunct type of therapy to just kind of put a lot of the um, residual freaking zombie ghosts to bed permanently, right? But um, <clears throat> it is what it is. You know, I'm 58 years and seven months old so I might as well just soldier on anyway <clears throat> actually I'm actually I just looked at the calendar I'm almost 58 years and eight months and you know like a child I'm counting my life away like like a child in, in months and weeks mm, not good man I mean it's different when you're a child but at my age like, I'm really fucking marking every day as if it's my last, which is not good. I should be embracing every day as if it's the beginning of something marvellous and wonderful and awesome. And I am striving to do that more life-affirming, to reframe my brain, you know. Today I did have a lovely day, and my friend Lynn had her little little granddaughter there come to visit, but before she arrived, she said, Katie's coming. And Katie says she doesn't know who you are and doesn't remember you. And Katie's five, you know. I said, that's because little Miss Katie is a brat and ignores me whenever I'm visiting your place. I usually say, hello, Katie. And she's just like, huh, walks off. I said, of course she doesn't know who I am or remember me. And I said, Lynn, the only reason why she's saying she doesn't remember me is to wind you up because she... She doesn't acknowledge me usually. So Lynn said, you know what? She's probably right. Children can be a bit mischievous and manipulative like that. Anyway, I always kind of grieve that I don't have grandchildren because <clears throat> quite honestly, that was the only reason why I married so young and had babies so very, very young by 20 and a half and 22 was I was looking far into a distant future hoping that I would be a grandmother one day and that I would re reap all the rewards of all my hard work, changing nappies and cleaning up vomit and dealing with cantankerous kids and driving them to school every day and to acting and to all their activities and beta and, mm -hmm. oh, my God. And now I don't get the joy of my own grandchildren. It's... It's crazy making, but there's nothing I can do, right? So anyway, Lynn made a point of saying, little Katie doesn't remember you, and she's, will you, will you wait, will you, will you stay until Katie comes from after school? Because Peter's picking her up. I said, all right, you know, thinking, oh, this kid doesn't like, doesn't actually like Auntie Tanya very bloody much, you know. The other children always loved me, but this little one's just, She's her own person. That's all I have to say about that. But anyway, she looks like a little living China doll with the, the most deepest blue eyes. They look like two giant crystal, blue crystals and this little round little face. She's a gorgeous, gorgeous child. She actually looks exactly like her mother did when she was a little girl. 
So, and I, I met I met her mother when she was about, you know, three or four months old. So I know she looks exactly like her mother. So anyway, <clears throat> I waited. I waited for little Katie to arrive. And then I said, hello, Katie. This is your famous Auntie Tanya. Do you remember me now? And her grandfather, Peter, leaned over and said, it's your infamous Auntie Tanya. Infamous, because he always likes to put shit on me, you know, a bit of a, bit of a family in-joke, right? They've been my friends for 35 years, so I let them get away with a few liberties, shall we say. So it's delightful. <clears throat> anyway, little Katie goes, infamous Auntie Tanya, and just looks at me kind of in awe, which was delightful. She really did look at me like she'd never seen me before, and it was the first time she'd seen me, which was a little bit trippy, you know, because I've known her since she was born, right? So I'm like, okay. Anyway, um, Lynn's neighbour was visiting, and she's... Um, just been diagnosed, she has to have her uterus removed because she has cancer and she's fought off cancer many, many times. So that's also very alarming and frightening. So I went over and gave her a big kiss on the cheek and told her to not grieve over losing her uterus. It's the best thing that will ever happen to her. Get rid of it, as we say in German, weg damit. I said, you don't need to carry around a diseased organ that's going to maybe you know, cause you further problems down the line, right? So she was like, oh, thank you, Tanya. And um, <clears throat> anyway, little little Katie's taking all this in, as children very wisely do. And uh, I said, look, I can't stay because I've been there all day, really. And I said, I've got to get home to little Charlie and spend a little bit of time with Charlie before she goes to sleep for the night. And um, <clears throat> a little Katie followed me out to the car and very delightedly said, put her arms out and said, can I have a cuddle? And I love cuddles with my little children friends. I don't have many children friends around me anymore, apart from my little girls down the road, the Anderson girls and uh, Lynn's grandchildren. So I looked down at her and I said, yes, you can have a cuddle. I said, um, but are you okay if I pick you up and lift you up for our cuddle? And she said, oh, yes, please, which was sweet. So, <clears throat> and she's quite a big little five-year-old. So I hoisted her up. She wrapped her little legs around me and I held on to her as if she was a koala. And uh, she was loving her little cuddle. And uh, she says, I said, oh, you're a very big girl now. I said, how old are you now? And she said, I'm five, which was just delightful. I said, oh, you're a big five-year-old. And anyway, we were cuddling like this. And you know what? Like, honestly, my heart just bloomed because I had already upset myself over, you know, my friend's neighbour, who was an acquaintance of mine also, and worrying about her. And so... <clears throat> quite frankly, and it needed the cuddle more than I, um, but uh, <laughs> oddly. But anyway, little Katie you know, chose to bestow the infamous Auntie Tanya with the cuddle. So we're cuddling away, and then up my back started to pinch, you know, because she's a solid little miss. And I said, well, this is a really delightful cuddle, little Katie, but I said, I have to put you down on the ground now because Auntie Tanya's infamous back just went eep and, um, and I have to put you down before my back goes out. And she's like, okay, Auntie. <laughs> Plonked her back down on the ground and her grandfather, Peter, was laughing at me too, very amused by it all, you know. And she's like, I love you, Auntie. I was like, oh, I love you too. I'm thinking this is the child that says she didn't remember who the hell I am, right? So it was kind of delightful, but there's kind of a spiritual message in there somewhere, which I will pass out later. <laughs> and um, anyway, I did say to her, because as, as we were cuddling, she's looking into my eyes with great deep intensity and affection, as children often do when they... They're literally looking right deep into your soul, right? With their little, little sweet, innocent, um, still close to um, nature, little spirits. They are like little nature spirits at that age, five, six, seven even. And then 
the fucking education system starts to like just <laughs> kill their spirit, right? And drains it out of them. So um, anyway, <clears throat> never mind. Th let's think happy thoughts. So I'm looking at this beautiful little child and I said, oh, Katie, I said, your eyes are so blue. They're like the deepest blue. They're like giant blue crystals embedded in your eyeballs. I said, they're just gorgeous. I said, I could drown in your eyes forever. And she just looks up at me and went, oh, okay, auntie. <laughs> but I kind of say that to all the children that have beautiful eyes, you know. I'm very fond, like my mother, I'm very fond of people who have attractive eyes. It's, it's one of them can be someone's very nicest feature. And uh, Lynn and Peter with her Scottish and his Viking ancestry because her husband's family were Danish, I believe. All their children, their three daughters, and um, all their grand grandsons and granddaughters have these amazing china blue eyes. They're just astonishing. So um, they are beautiful children, you know. So I had this gorgeous little cuddle with her and uh, I hopped in the car and, uh, and drove home and I thought, you know what, for someone who was just crying yesterday on my YouTube video about how I don't have grandchildren and how I've been malfeasantly robbed by the COVID epoch and num prime primary number one, that's a primary primary thing that robbed us, but also, you know, the fertility um, but also, to be fair, you know, my daughters being what would be termed geriatric mothers, even if they did fall pregnant now, um, I uh, <clears throat> I felt I felt quite aggrieved by that yesterday. Remember, I was making it made a point of saying that in my video yesterday, and today the gods arranged it, and their miraculous, beautiful, spiritual, sweet ways that I was blessed with a sweet, loving attention and a cuddle. And not just a cuddle, like a real strong bear hug. Like she wrapped herself around me like I was a tree and she was a little teddy bear, you know, little koala. So um, I was blessed with that affection from a young child. And uh, I said to Katie, I said, you, your grandma... And Aunty Tanya have been friends for a very, very, very long time. And I knew your mummy when she was a little baby, a little girl like you. And she just looked at me in amazement, you know. Which in a way kind of makes me feel old too. <laughs> 35 years went ding like that. And um, it's amazing, the passage of time. But how, as they say in French... Plus ça change, plus c'est la même chose. The more things change, the more they stay the same. So little Tracy, little Katie's mother Tracy is all grown up and a mother um, of, you know, two beautiful daughters. And little Katie is just literally the image of her when she was a child. So although the time has shifted and the decades have passed us by, the little images of our progeny keep reoccurring with, again, the same genetics and the same patterning and the same sweetness and um, often even the same looks like one of their parents, right? Like my youngest is a spitting image of, well, was, I don't know what she looks like now really, but she was the spitting image of my father-in-law, which was kind of, you know, interesting, and Crystal <clears throat> is very, looks very much like almost a composite between me and my mother-in-law, because my mother and I, my mother-in-law and I actually looked quite alike, we had a similar shaped nose, and she had fuller lips than me, but we had the same cheekbones, and she had darker hair, but you know, you put us together, we were both short and kind of chubby, and I actually look at the photos and I, <laughs> I thought, oh, great. He thought he was marrying his mother, who was going to be all docile and submissive and compliant. And no, he married me. 
Even my mother-in-law used to beg me to be more submissive and docile and I told her frankly I would rather die and that actually did become an option at several times during our marriage. The thought of dying became ever, ever more attractive. So um, <clears throat> I kind of had to move on from that relationship. But yeah, it is, it is a bit confronting when, uh, when you realise that um, you're married to someone who chose you because you look so much like their mother. You know. And like my mother in law and I got on usually fairly well, so it wasn't it wasn't so much that, but it, it was just, you know, what can I say? As I said, the 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 continuous um programming and patterning built into our race memory and DNA and it just every generation I suppose seeks to replace itself with something that reminds you of home, right? The ancestors. The ancestors that love us babies. And <clears throat> on this note, talk about synchronicity. I woke up this morning and went outside. This is still 2022, by the way. To make my morning milk libations to the four directions and the spirits and ancestors that love me. Which reminds me I need to do that again. It, um, it's not fair to tease the spirits with offerings and then ignore them for the next year or so. But I talk to you guys all the time, like you're not forgotten, all right? You are very much part of my, you, you, you're part of me now. With or without the milk or the Jack Daniels libations, babies. Anyway, <clears throat> there is that. I was delighted to see a mating pair of very happy, fat kookaburras swimming in the small spa bath I set up for the dog to bathe in, to cool off on, to cool off in on these scathing hot days. It's also for the wildlife. The birds smiled back at me, preening their feathers. They were so happy and grateful. Housing wanted me to get rid of this little pond too, but it really is for the birds, and they can just fuck off. My visiting kookaburras love their bird bath so much. Other birds come throughout the day too, to drink and swim. They can't bathe in my two remaining fish ponds, <laughs> now only one remaining one because of their spite as I have steel on top to protect the goldfish. But the crows do love to drop scraps of carrion or bread in the top waterfall, which is gross, but they like their food softened up, I suppose. Anyway, I feel very peaceful right now. I was going to euthanise little Sophie this week, but she must have sensed her impending demise as she has started eating again. Yet another reprieve. But she is so skinny that I really should just do it. I guess as long as she is eating even small amounts, she deserves another chance. And my friend Julie said, just let her go naturally. And I replied, it's been well over a month. And Julie replied, one day she will leave the house and you won't see her again or she will go in her sleep. And I replied, yeah, she already left the house for 11 days, came back a much more appreciative pussycat, but it's taking a long time to either recover or die. I joke she is a zombie cat, but it's no laughing matter. But yes... Not sure whether to kill her off or let her go in her own time. Today was going to be the day, but she ate well last night. And I just couldn't bear to shorten her life while she was still eating with, with gusto. But she was literally wasting away on me. It was, it was horrific in a way. But every time I'd say, oh, I'm going to euthanize her, my daughter, who was very fond of 
Sophie would would shriek at me and said, stop murdering all your cats and you're a murderer and put all this guilt on me. And you know what? It wasn't fair. It wasn't fair to do that to me or the cat, you know, to drag her out. I dragged her out for six weeks, six fucking weeks. But that was because she was still eating, you know, up until the end when I realised she she couldn't, you know, she wasn't. She'd completely lost her appetite and will to, will to live and then it was time to let her go. So um, <clears throat> it's a hard choice to make, the choice between, you know, life and death. And uh, it's hard because some of us, even in animal form, fight so damn hard for our survival that you don't have the heart to do it to them, you know. You really don't. Anyway, 4th of December 2018. I had a lovely dinner with my niece and nephew, which actually my ex-husband's niece and nephew, who migrated over to Australia. And yeah, were quite sweet with me for a while and then drifted off, as people do. So, um... <clears throat> Ruby cooked a delicious curry and we had pavlovas for dessert. I brought my Hanukia over so Mark and Aisha and Isaac, which is their children, could light the candles and have Hanukkah gout. So it was very lovely because um, Ruby's actually Muslim and is raising them in the Muslim faith. But I said, look, they are also Jewish because they are, you know, Mark's grandparents were Jews and Mark was a Jew although he's not religious anymore and I said I just think it would be lovely if you know just just even for one year they got to experience Hanukkah and, and I'll facilitate that so I bought them a little Hanukkah and we lit the candles and you know what it was delightful and our personal ancestors the Aaron's Mishpucha the Aaron's family I actually could feel their presence around us, delighting that their little Muslim children, grandchildren, experienced Hanukkah for the first time. Well, maybe not the first time, but the first time that we were all together, right? The third night of Hanukkah was their grandmother and great-grandmother, Hilda Aaron's Jewish birthday. Her secular birthday was the 13th of December, but um, she used to say to me, my birthday is the third candle of Hanukkah. So because our, our months moved with the lunar cycle, her birthday would fall at different times of the year, depending when Hanukkah is. So this year, um, Hanukkah starts on the 7th of December, on Thursday evening. Yeah, so um, it'll be the 9th, the 9th of December. Is that right? 7, 8, 9. Yeah, her, her birthday will be on the 9th of December this year. So I try to honour them, you know. I do try to honour them, even though hmm, when they were alive, it was kind of navigating two toxic families at the same time, which was very crazy-making and vulnerable making and very debilitating for my mental health right which is why I'm actually quite happy to spend Christmas and Hanukkah alone you know in recent years for the last 10 years or so um, <clears throat> it's peaceful and relaxing and less triggering for me so there is that <laughs> Oh, it's awful, but there is that. That's how it, that's the cards that were dealt me. So, but never mind. So it was nice to be all together with that branch of the family tree. I think Hilda would have been happy to see us together lighting the Hanukia. And as I said, I, I have a sense that, you know, Harry and Hilda and all their family line were with us. Maybe it was my imagination, but... You know, my father-in-law was incredibly spiritual and actually haunted us in the most astonishing way when they first migrated and we all sat around the dinner table, the table tipped by itself and it's a very, you know, 
it's a, it's a it's a dining dining room table so it was astonishing um so i think that was harry's spirit delighting that we were together because uh, mark as a little boy absolutely adored me he, he thought i was the bee's knees i could do no wrong you know so <clears throat> they were so excited when they first came and then the patina wore off as it does so or maybe ruby didn't like like me trying to encourage a little bit of the jewish yiddish kite into the children maybe that was the source of the problem i really don't know but at the end of the day it doesn't matter now life goes on life goes on be the river that never touches the same stone twice 4th of December 2018, um, a quote of the day from Janice Ian, the singer and songwriter. It may be that your sole purpose in life is simply to serve as a warning to others, anonymous. I like that. I'm your warning to others, sweet peas. <laughs> Don't end up like me. I'm trying to maintain equilibrium and not become a bitter, cantankerous, irascible old Baba Yaga crone. But <clears throat> that too is um, a potentiate I could embrace one day. But I choose not to. 4th of December 2017. Here she blows, wild, wet, bitchin' beauty. Thank you, God. A big storm is rolling in, and like everything in my life, it's ultra spiritual, laughing my ass off. God is great. Thor and Odin are practicing rolling heads again. So, actually, a storm was looking imminent for this evening, but I don't know what's happened to it. it must have rolled on by. Um, it's. Uh, moved on somewhere else 4th of december 2016 <clears throat> i can't get rid of my pressure headache grr might go to bed early that will be from the heat watching preacher on stan it's like a cross between true blood and pulp fiction i really enjoyed that show it was wonderful well all of those shows are well that movie and the, that other tv show they were all quite wonderful. I love things about quirkiness and, you know, paranormal characters and, you know, I'm a very unusual character. You've probably figured that out if you watch my videos, like, duh. I don't even need to tell you that I'm an unusual character because we all know, right? Woke up at... <laughs> love me, love my quirkiness. Woke up at 3 p.m. boiling hot, but I am so grateful for the rain we got yesterday afternoon and that <clears throat> incredible storm. I need a drink. <clears throat> we had two fantastic nights. I had two fantastic nights dancing with my beautiful, amazing friends. I am so happy and grateful for the magic of loving friendships, for the kindness generosity and most of all for our fun and laughter thank you god for sustaining me and bringing me to this season of joy amen which is the english version of the shehekianu prayer so there you go 4th of december 2015 i just clipped beauregard's nails they were surprisingly long for such a little fellow. So, um, yeah, he was still only a tiny puppy then. 4th of December 2014, 4.57am. Not been to bed yet. Attempted to put glow and dark resin on my staff. Um, epic fail. The goop went hot and hardened faster than I could shove it in there. Worse yet, in my panic to utilise $25 worth of goop by shoving as much as I could, 
intrepid as ever. I kicked over the acetone and it poured all over my floor. It has probably stripped my floor varnish. Ah. So then more panic stations as I quickly got detergent to wash off the acetone from the affected part of the floor. Then another half hour to clean the excess goo off my staff. All I can say is I really should try not to do random home maintenance and all craft work and goop off at three in the morning. Now my nerves are shattered. I have ruined my staff and the floor and so on that note, having opened every window and door in the house so the cats and I don't get stoned from the fumes, I will attempt sleep. What is it about this time of year when I go into overachieving mode? Like, really, what is that about? 4th of December 2013. Thank you, Hashem, that means God, and the exquisite name redacted, because I hate that bitch now, for the wonderful <laughs> Christmas hamper. So much food, and I managed to fit it in my freezer, which is awesome. I was praying for a miracle, and this, Chris, and this surprise package was gifted to me in less than 24 hours. Although, to be fair, she got it donated to her, and she'd left most of the food unrefrigerated, so when she gave it to me, it was already kind of starting to already go off a bit in the heat. I mean, and I'm not complaining, because she meant well, like name redacted did mean well in a weird sort of half-assed kind of way so anyway i take all that food home what happened you guessed it food poisoning but that's not why i hate her i hate her for things that she did several years later which was just awful or she was absolutely venal and awful but you know here i was <laughs> mired in my usual christmas hanukkah poverty blues Having prayed for a miracle, having received the surprise package in less than 24 hours, as often happens to me when I'm at my wit's end, I get gifted at the 11th hour. So however it works, right? However the Holy One works, he worked through her that day. Odd, but I did get rather ill from some of the food that she'd gifted me, unfortunately. But never mind, you know. It was a lesson in faith, I say, in the abundance of the universe. And I am grateful that she shared her Christmas bonus with me. I'm not grateful for what she did later, though. That was awful. I, she also made a yummy dinner and we spent some quality time with her housemate, Darren. He was um, a bit of an oddball too, was Darren. But never mind, life goes on. I write, happy, grateful woman here. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Because gratitude is everything. Gratitude keeps the wheels greased for abundance, people. I know that's new agey, but new agey, new cagey philosophy. But I found it to be true. Excellent manners and gratitude courage under fire and the occasional bit of humility goes a long bloody way sometimes unless you're dealing with sociopaths like the un unnameable one who basically was throwing all, all his scraps at me because less for her to throw out right hindsight 2020 but shh She took more than a few scraps in the end off me. Bit off more than she could chew, that one. Never mind. More good news to come when Crystal is willing to let me skite. I am delighted to be surrounded by such beautiful, positive, successful people as my daughter and my gorgeous friends who are so supportive. 
Baruch Hashem, a thousand blessings on your heads. And sometimes I do live in Pollyanna fairyland and refuse to actually see the forest for the trees and choose to close my eyes or blind myself to the absolute horrific truth because it's too fucking painful to deal with, right? Denial really can be a long river in Africa, which is why I don't do that anymore. I express my truth, even if it means that it feels like I'm being sliced by a razor blade, which I would never do. I would never do that. I would never self-harm like that. But the truth can be very painful to, um, to integrate into your body, mind, and psyche and spirit. It can be a painful truth at times. But as I was saying to Jared at the markets on Saturday, I won't shrink down from it for anyone and I won't. I won't abdicate or hide from the truth anymore, no matter how painful it is for me at times. Because um, I find it healing and liberating and, and, and integrating to honour the yin and the yang and the uncomfortable truths and the beautiful truths. Because not everything is ugly in this people. That particular woman turned very ugly towards me, very ugly indeed, but that Christmas had wanted to share her abundance with me, which was indeed a kindness and a sweetness. So yin and yang, yin and yang. Disturbing and fairly accurate description of modern first world societies, the death of the empire and the birth of barbarism. I see this every weekend on my nights out, the breakdown of courtesy, respect, chivalry and feeling safe. I am fighting my own quiet or not so quiet campaign every weekend to demand to be treated as an equal, as a mensch, which means human being, as a woman who more often than not finds myself protective of others around me. We are so accustomed to violence and crass rudeness that most women and many men are afraid to confront the leery behaviours of others. I repeatedly instruct younger women around me to just say no and mean it. Unfortunately, under the sedation of alcohol and the peer pressure to find the elusive love partner, many of our young and not so young persist and literally persist in literally barking up the wrong trees. It makes and I did that too by the way, it's why I said not so young. It makes for a very fraught experience when there are literally few options for a saner, more stable existence than to actively choose to stay alone. Fortunately, many of my friends have or are discovering the same, and we are able to support each other while enjoying ourselves on the dance floor with or without alcohol in our system. And that was in response to an article posted by American Psychosis Adbusters.org Culture Jammer Headquarters. Must have been a doozy of an article to evoke that rage in me, that passion in me. But it's true. I did, I did, did see that. That was 2013. I was seeing it every weekend. The horror, the abject fucking horror of the breakdown of our Western society and the disparate disconnection battle of our sexes, right? And 10 years later, it's no better, in fact, possibly even worse. 4.45 a.m., busy night, rehung some photos of the girls in, in, in my spare bedroom, did several loads of washing, I loved looking at the stars as I hung out the washing. Yeah, I sometimes love that, hanging out washing at night and just picking them up, 
looking at the stars. Sometimes I see shooting stars. It's just delightful. I went to Irish Murphy's for a few hours to listen to Woody play. Woody normally plays in Burst, that's his band. Came home at 1am, Woody Woodman that is. <laughs> Love you Woody. <coughs> Haven't spoken to you in years but no, no hard feelings against you. Still love you, mate. Came home at 1am but got the home maintenance bug that Jared and Crystal always tease me about. I should go to bed but not tired yet. I changed the sheets so it'll be lovely when I finally get there. Oh yes, I love snuggling into fresh clean sheets. It's one of my simple pleasures. 4th of December 2012. I had an interesting encounter with a power animal tonight, actually a bird of prey, an owl. I had heard I had heard it outside my front no, I was right the first time. I had heard outside my front door a terrible screeching, and thinking it was two possums either fighting or mating, I ran outside to look for the noisy little culprits. I couldn't see any possums in the tree, but something made me go downstairs and stand under the tree and look into the darkness at the boughs. And sure enough, I spied an owl there. It looked down at me, watching me suspiciously, and I hailed it with a quiet but friendly hello. It leaned its body closer to the bow so that it was snuggled closer in an attempt to disguise its form. And for a few moments, I thought I was seeing not an owl, but a possum after all. <laughs> so I walked around the tree and looked at the creature from several different angles. And it also looked down at me feeling less fearful, I guess. So I called up in delight and amazement. Oh, you are an owl after all. And as I had thought it might have been either a marsupial possum or a tawny frogmouth. And to my surprise, it spoke back to me with two distinct owlish hoos. I was enraptured. Then my owl friend took off into the night with a flurry of wings and I returned to my living room. See below the meaning of owl from www.shamanicjourney.com. I found this very interesting. Owl power animal, symbol of wisdom Stealth, Secrecy, Part 2, posted by Ina Woolcott. Humans are able to block out that which we don't want to remember or deal with, e.g. memories with negative emotions attached to them, traumas and accidents, etc. We deny that about ourselves which we do not wish to see. When dreaming, sometimes our unconscious mind becomes conscious. However, again these dreams are forgotten on purpose. Hiding from ourselves, our feelings, emotions and thoughts means we are being deceitful to ourselves. If Al has found you, they have the ability to unmask and see what is truly beneath the surface. They pierce illusion. On the flip side, perhaps you have the ability to pierce illusions and see what is really going on behind the scenes, to see what is going on in the darkness of others' souls. Perhaps you have noticed that people are a little uncomfortable around you. 
at the Kilcoy markets for sure until that beautiful family came to support us. Use this gift carefully and compassionately, which I was striving very, very hard to do to keep my even temper and remain humble in the face of derision, which my normal response is to, you know, not literally, but what's the word, allegorically. I was on my best behaviour that day, but of course I was also very triggered and very frightened for my friend, Jared, who became so suddenly unwell. So it was probably why I was like carefully gauging and containing my emotions because if I lost my shit, it would have gone to hell in a handbasket completely. So there was that. It would be good for this gift to develop in all humans, for our teaches us to look into the darkest parts of our souls and learn from this darkness. <clears throat> There are circa 135 species of owl, 17 of which are found in North America. They come in all sizes, from a tiny miniature that lives inside the cactus in the desert, to the great horned owl, the only bird able to outfly the golden eagle. To see a fully grown great horned is awe-inspiring. They have furry talons that closely resemble the paws of a baby mountain lion with claws extended. Being meat eaters means they are a force to be reckoned with if challenged or if something dear to them is threatened. Their large and forward-facing eyes gives them a wise appearance. They have a greater range of movement in their necks than any other animal with a spinal column. Owls turn their heads, not their eyes, which are stationary. The owl is keenly aware of its surroundings. Its night vision is so powerful that it can see prey when the light is the same as a candle burning 2,500 feet away. Their extremely soft, thick wings let them fly silently to swoop down on their prey. Their ability to move unnoticed teaches us how to do the same. As well as their almost supernatural eyesight, they have supernatural hearing. Their secretive ways, silent flight and differing calls such as whistles, Shrill, shrill shrieks, no, shrill screeches and hoots have made the owl symbols of superstition and even fear in some parts of the world. Some native tribes regard owl as a symbol of death, whilst others will believe that they represent the mysteries of shamanism and witchcraft. Owls are sometimes believed to visit those about to die. This doesn't so much mean a physical death as much as it means letting go of a part of you that no longer serves you. With their spectral senses, the owl helps guide us through the dark tunnels of fear, change and unknowing to the light at the other end. Our people generally are private, complex people and don't like others to know what they are really thinking. Sometimes this can cause misinterpretations, especially in personal relationships. Our people also often have clairvoyant and psychic abilities. People born with this power animal have chosen a path that implies a need to develop these gifts for the aid of others and they make excellent therapists, psychologists and counsellors. For part one of our owl power animal, click here. Owl, owl, well, I can't even speak anymore. Owl, owl, 
Owl power animal. Symbol of wisdom, stealth, secrecy, part one. Hmm. Now I just want to scroll back. I think it said I said 2012, didn't I? I want to. I want to. There's a reason I want to scroll back to which year it was because I did have a near death experience, but um, it wasn't till well, the first one was in 2015 and the second one was in 2019. So that event happened in 4th of December 2012. So if it was a harbinger of my own almost death, it was three years early, right? But I was also letting go of a lot of shit that year too, so maybe that's why Al came to me. You know, the stepping away from the crud of the past and forging a new path as I was doing. Um, I just had my two months, not quite two months before, um, in small inheritance and I was definitely in forward mo motion after that raw dispute ended, determined to reclaim my life in all its fullness and vibrancy and joyousness and vivacity and Mm. Of course, at that time, as always, hoping to find a true love partner too. Oh, you poor bitch. Oh, you poor, you poor bitch, dreamer. But um, I had a lovely time dancing wildly all the last 13 years, so je ne regrette rien. And the dance, my darlings, will continue for as long as my legs can hold me up and I can still walk and dance and sashay and sway and raise my own energy up as an offering before the gods. <clears throat> so I continue on. Actually, as well as continuing on with my archery, which I've barely grasped, gr grasped the basics of, I would like one day to learn the ancient art of falconry. That would be cool. Then I could have my own owl, like Harry Potter. Hmm. Still awake after going to bed at 2am, so much rattling around my head and so much awe and sense of excitement. Hopefully I get a decent sleep later. Hmm. Same thing, same shit. Here we are, all these years later. I need a decent sleep tonight. I'm going to visit my cousin tomorrow. And I hope to sleep tonight. I've been lying in bed trying to sleep, listening to the Alsatian barking down the road and imagining the sounds of someone walking on my property to kill the chickens. Post-traumatic stress syndrome, really. This thing has gotten me really hypervigilant and will take some time for me to feel safe again. Dear goddess. Meanwhile, Hecate Hen has been broody on the nest all day yesterday, so I will have to put a few old gol golf balls in the nest to trick her into thinking she has babies on the way. I picked her up and gave her a lovely cuddle and a chat, and she nuzzled me with her beak and closed her eyes contentedly. But when I put her back in the coop, she hopped back in the nest to brood some more. I think she is also grieving, not just Lilith and Morgana, but the three little ones, Merlin, Astrid and Riri. She had teamed up with the younger three and is just bereft now they are gone. And as she is excluded by Elvira and Tabitha, she has taken to her nest. Poor love. Tomorrow, I'll make time to play with them and Bella and the cats as I was out today getting my hair done and out all weekend. Bella and I might take a drive too and have a long, lovely walk at Wynnum Beach tomorrow, Arvo, if and when it cools down a bit. 4th of December, 2009. I'm schwitzing like a hog, 
plutzing like a neurotic, quetching like a kraksa, and smirking like a Cheshire cat. And thus concludes my readings of today's date, 4th of December 2023. So, much love as always from the Tanya, the Psychedelic Dreamer, Miss Five, Mama T, and Titania's Realm at Sacred Space. Have a beautiful day, evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you are, night, wherever you are in the space-time continuum on planet Earth or in the outer echelons of the multiverses. And uh, bright blessings upon you all. Have um, Live your best life to the best of your ability, no matter what circumstances you are you know, enduring or uh, experiencing. And, uh, yeah, have a wonderful, wonderful time of it, people of Earth. Love you all. Bye for now from Sacred Space.